हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू द कंप्लीट कोर्स ऑफ बीबीए इन एविएशन मैनेजमेंट दिस विल बी अ रियली लॉन्ग प्लेलिस्ट द चैप्टर्स थॉट इन दिस प्लेलिस्ट विल बी लाइव एंड ऑन स्पॉट डाउट्स विल बी क्लैरिफाइड एज वी आर कमेंसिंग द फर्स्ट यूनिट ऑफ दिस एंटायर कोर्स वी हैव सिक्स सेमेस्टर्स आउट ऑफ व्हिच दिस इज द फर्स्ट सेमेस्टर का फर्स्ट यूनिट एंटायर कोर्स we have three where semesters. we shall be studying about some basics of airline industry according to the syllabus it says uh, introduction to airline industry so guys brace yourselves cause the captain has put the seat belt signs on buckle up and prepare for a smooth take off let's quickly look into the contents of this unit so you will be studying about um the first one is scope of airline industry then you have types of airline industry then you have uh, scheduled and non scheduled flights air cargo transport economic and social impact then you have regulatory bodies and lastly you have got key performance indicators let me first look into the scope of the airline industry before i start let me tell you that the information given in these presentations is not complete you have to read the information on the screen as well as you have to listen what i explain and if you wish you can make your own notes as well that's it from my end let's begin the airline industry is made up of companies whose primary business activities are completely focused on air transportation for passengers and cargo and it includes major network carriers regional carriers and low cost carriers major carriers meaning services to various destinations in different countries okay like bombay to various destinations to european countries by air india okay or another example is uh, dubai to multiple indian destinations by emirates this is called as major carriers not only these it can be any destination okay major carriers in india like air india uh, vistara jet airways okay they fly both domestic and international destinations providing best in flight services it is also called as full service carriers okay meaning major carriers is also called as full service carriers next what we have next is uh next what i want to tell you guys is about uh, regional carriers okay carriers these carriers are those who fly from point a to b where their destinations are limited with the domestic country or in other words airlines that op- operate regional aircraft to provide passenger a service to communities without sufficient demand to attract main line service examples what i can give you is flights from hubali uh, belgaum bellary mysore all the way to bangalore okay so where bangalore is the international airport it's the major airport in karnataka right simple then uh we are i'm going to tell you about what is a low cost carrier okay uh, these low cost carriers are uh, carriers who fly both domestic and international destinations but they are not called as major carriers low cost air, uh, carriers are also called as budget airlines these airlines offer low fares and fewer amenities than traditional full service airlines examples for these i can give you like indigo spice jet go air ran air okay like all these airlines 
let's uh, let me take you to the next slide uh, so what do we have yes so we talk about the scope of airline industry so under this we have five different scopes okay what we are going to study uh, and let's see what are those so first one is aircraft manufacturers then we have airport operations then we have support industries then we have maintenance and lastly we have service providers let me take you to the next slide what do we have so under aircraft manufacturers we have three types okay one is commercial transport another one is general aviation planes and another one is military aircrafts so commercial transport okay let me uh, try explaining you this in a simple word okay it is a part of civil aviation which basically involves to transport passengers and freight for example we have aircrafts like boeing 737 airbus a350s a320s antonov an124 and etc right yeah so like these kinds of aircrafts are for commercial like they are called as commercial transport okay and they are part of civil aviation because these aircrafts fly passengers okay they are involved in uh, tra uh, uh flying passengers and uh, f uh, and also they transport freights as well right then comes general aviation planes okay so general aviation planes uh example could be aircrafts like uh, charter aircrafts okay charter flights okay or we have training aircrafts basically uh aircrafts like these they don't fly regular passengers and cargo meaning not for commercial purpose then we have um, military aircrafts these are e either fixed wing or rotary wing aircraft that is operated by the air force of the particular country they can be either combat or non combat uh, okay aircrafts combat aircrafts meaning like tejas uh rafael f16s and etc then you have a uh, non combat aircrafts are those who carry goods for combat purposes used in rescue operations and etc some aircrafts uh, for non for non combat are uh, c17 globe master illusion il uh, 72 and etc similar aircraft similar to those okay then uh, the next scope what we have is airport airport operations again there are two sub classifications those are runways and navigation systems what is a runway i know this is sort of a stupid question but those who don't know then listen this it is a long and straight rectangular strip which is used to take off or land an aircraft it is built in large and small sized aerodromes in the first paragraph uh, what you can see on the screen you have the definition of a runway given by icao or iko i call it as iko okay so iko stands for uh, international civil aviation organization um it is a specialized agency of the uh, uh of the united nations okay it codifies the principles and techniques of international air navigation and also fosters the planning and development of international air transport to ensure safe and orderly growth its headquarters is located in the quartier international of montreal 
Quebec in Canada. Then comes uh, navigation systems. Answer this to yourself. Okay, what do you mean by navigation? I know you all know what navigation is. With the help of Google Maps, we are able to reach uh, from point from one point to another point, right? But in aviation, we never use Google Maps. Instead, we take help of navigation systems provided by the aircraft to help us locate our destination. There will be a navigator who will make directions on a map and hand it over to the pilots. And then pilots fly according to the path given to them. Where, uh, have you heard of waypoints? So, uh, these waypoints are like endpoints from origin to destination. Each waypoint is identified by a unique name. Uh, which can be alphabetical form or alpha numeric form. Okay. Then we have support industries and uh, um, support industries and uh, under that we have got fuel supply. We know that fuel is an key element what we need to fly the big metal board. We have heard of petrol, diesel, biofuel, and etc. etc. Right? But have you heard of jet fuel? Jet fuel or aviation fuel? It is a special type of petroleum used to power aircrafts. Its pricing is really less compared to price of petrol and diesel in India. That is nearly uh, 53 to 55. Indian rupees per liter. I know this is really less. The, like the cost of uh, jet fuel is really less compared to petrol and diesels. We have many petroleum industries who give jet fuel to all airline companies. Okay, military operations. Okay, and for uh, general aircraft as well. Um, then. We have maintenance. We have got four subclassifications. Uh, they are scheduled maintenance check, ground transportation, hospitality industry, and car rentals. As trains, cars, and other transports need to go under maintenance in the same way, an aircraft requires to go under maintenance just to ensure safe and correct functioning of the aircraft. ICAO, that is International Civil Aviation Organization, has given certain standards which is to be implemented and followed by every country. Then we have scheduled maintenance checks. Maintenance of an aircraft to be done in certain amount of time. Yes, an aircraft has to be uh, Maintain uh, has to go under maintenance after every particular duration set by the company. It could be either a month, uh, once in a like every 15 days, or it could be every 30 days. It depends totally on the airline company, okay? Whoever owns that aircraft, the aircraft should go under maintenance, okay? Um, as I said, you might have a question that how much time does an aircraft take for its maintenance? The answer to this is the bigger the aircraft, the more time it takes. And also it depends on the age of the aircraft. Okay, the older the aircraft, the more time she will spend on the ground. And that's true. Then we have got uh, ground transportation. I am just gonna read this paragraph on the screen, okay. So, yes, many airlines subcontract ground handling at different airports, handling agents or even to another airline. According to IATA, that is the International Air Transport Association, it tells, conservative estimates indicate airlines outsource more than 50% of the ground handling that takes place at the world's airport. 
ground handling addresses the many service requirements of an airliner between the time it arrives at the terminal gate and the time it departs for its next flight speed efficiency and accuracy are more are important in ground handling services in order to minimize the turnaround time what is turnaround time the time during which the aircraft must remain parked at the gate faster turnarounds for lower ground times are correlated for be- to better profits then we have hospitality industry again i will be reading what's here on my screen so hospitality is the uh, most important factor okay to enhance the airline's reputation and dignity it needs confidence it needs graceful approach communication skill presence of mind and cool crisis management yes then uh we have car rentals many airlines outsource many cab rentals across the city to ensure that their crew members gets a hassle free chauffeur drive from their home or hotel to the airport and vice versa then we have service providers okay those are uh, travel agents and freight provider freight freight forwarders sorry yeah so i don't have to tell anything much about travel agents cause you know who they are and what work they do right so i'll be skip i'll be directly jumping on to freight uh, freight forwarders so uh, freight forwarders are the courier companies uh, that helps airlines to get shipment delivered from one point to another with this we have finished the first content or the first sub content of this unit 1 then uh, we are going to study about uh, types or categories of airline industry there are four different types let's see what they are Uh, one is international national regional and cargo so international uh, is this service takes more than 150 passengers and have uh, them and can take anywhere in the world okay in this category the business have its revenue for at least 1 billion us dollars then uh, comes national so in this category uh, it can take uh, passengers up to 150 okay 150 or like a max of 200 passengers and uh, the business have its revenue uh, for Uh, from a uh, hundred million dollars to one billion dollar uh, US dollars. Then uh, we have regional, the small companies which mainly focus on the flights with quick halts, and uh, have the revenue of this business is less than hundred million dollars. Next comes cargo. The main focus of these airlines is to carry goods. simple then uh, let's now see about the different differences between schedule and non schedule aircrafts okay the flights that we take from point a to b is called a scheduled flight okay these flights have a fixed timings dates fares basically every detail is will be given in the ticket ticket booking sites right whenever you book a flight just take an example from uh, delhi to bombay okay you and you go through the airline ticket sites okay 
uh, and you see yes you see the departure time you see the arrival time you see the fare okay then you uh, then you have different categories whichever uh, do you want to travel in economy do you want to travel in business class do you want to travel in first class okay you will have different sub categories right all those are scheduled okay like that then uh, we have non scheduled flights okay this can be also called as charter flights these non scheduled flights uh, flights aren't fixed by the company i can help you understand this better by an example so let me take an example of elon musk okay if elon musk wanted to, if he wants to fly from uh, anywhere across the world let's take he wants to fly from washington to manchester example okay he makes an unplanned trip obvious okay overnight he makes an unplanned trip overnight and he leaves for the airport and flies to manchester on his gulf stream g650 er private jet yeah so whatever uh, where, like obviously uh, he will um, as elon musk he's uh, one of the richest uh, guy in the world uh, he won't uh, be traveling in uh, uh, what do you say like in normal airlines right like the airlines who fly normally so he'll be flying on a he will be flying on his private aircraft okay his private a whenever he flies it's an unscheduled trip he can fly any time okay but he has to inform the uh, the air traffic controller or the um, he has to inform the airport he has to inform uh, like to all those people who are involved in the air side operations right he has to inform everyone next uh, like okay suppose this example made you confused okay uh, i'll take an another example of a famous celebrity okay he will uh, let's take an indian celebrity um uh, uh, so what will an indian celebrity do obviously he might go to reliance group okay first he'll ask uh, if he wants to fly with uh, one of the aircrafts by reliance group um he will first go to uh, the reliance group okay the industry okay and he is going uh, he or she is going to ask to hand over one of the aircrafts like for 4 hours from uh, like for 4 to 5 hours journey from uh, example like mumbai to uh, chandigarh example okay so um uh, uh so what reliance group will do is like they'll hand over one of the premium uh, premium aircrafts that is legacy 650 okay there is a detailed step by step procedure okay to be followed like uh, how you can rent an uh, like uh, how you can uh, rent an uh, premium aircraft uh, like a premium uh, aircraft for few hours okay how much does it cost all that is a different topic and i'll shall discuss all those things in some other video so uh, even these celebs okay like they don't fly on regular basis right even uh, if they want to fly obviously they will have an unplanned trip mostly okay if they want to have a privacy they will choose a premium aircraft or they'll choose uh, like uh, sorry they'll choose a uh, charter flight else they will aram se travel in either business class or uh or they'll travel in first class uh in like yep yeah, i hope like you guys getting getting this point okay so um, it's uh so yeah like you can take like the i hope like you have understood the meaning of 
uh, non scheduled uh, flights and scheduled flights right now let's take a look into air cargo transport what is the fastest mode i'll ask you this question what is the fastest mode to deliver any freight globally i want you guys to answer this in the chat box right away okay so the answer to this is air freight yes it's obvious that the cost of sending any shipment by air is costly which is some famous car uh, like okay another question which are some uh, like uh, which are the uh, some famous uh, cargo carriers okay worldwide let me repeat uh, it's only cargo carriers okay like you need to name some cargo carriers worldwide only cargo carriers yes so i'll answer this as well right now if you are answering it in the chat box it's well and good uh, then uh, let me answer this as well for you uh, the answer to this is either uh, like you have like many okay like i'll give you i'll answer few uh, you have fedex you have dhl dhl blue dot and you have ups right then you have uh, yeah airlines like these then uh, how the weight or tot yeah you guys might be have another question right like uh, how the weight or total volume of the uh, total air freight is calculated right let me tell you in this video let's see that uh, like air freight okay uh, in simple words uh, air freight is the volume of freight express and diplomatic bags carried on each flight stage okay so one more question arises is what is flight stage right so operations on an aircraft from take off to its next landing is called flight stage okay and uh, this is measured in metric tons times kilometers traveled i repeat this is measured in metric tons times kilometers traveled uh, now uh, the world map okay what you can see in the screen okay uh, it talks about air transport uh, for the year 2017 where you can see that uh, all gray colored areas the actual data has not been found uh, and um, as the color gets darker the volume of the air freight of that country increases okay meaning like uh you uh, uh us country ka uh, air freight uh, increase ho chuka hai air freight services are increasing on those countries both import and export okay then uh, we have um economic and social impact Uh, let me uh, uh, read what's there on the screen. Air transportation is the safest and the most efficient mean of public transportation over long distances and across geographical barriers. No alternative means of transport exist. Air transportation's vast network of affordable transportation services offers freedom to travel for nations, regions, and individuals, and facilitates the exchange of cultural and educational experiences. Many outlying, uh, outlying uh, communities would be as isolated without uh, access to air services. It provides the only worldwide. transportation network which makes it essential for global a business and tourism this uh, this study focuses on uh, social and economic contribution of air transportation in general first 
social and economic impacts of air transportations are examined in macro level and then its impacts are discussed by analyzing the current situation of air transportation and indicators in turkey i guess like this is really a detailed information okay like i don't think like you really need anything much on it okay then also the economic impact of air transportation even though there are a variety of transportation modes such as automobiles trucks ships and railroads perhaps no other mode has more significant impact on intercity trade and co- commerce than aviation right travel in the aviation system allows for intercontinental travel and uh, travel of large volumes of passengers and cargo in relative short period of time access to markets around the world has resulted in the largest of communities re- uh, reaping um, extraordinary uh, economic benefit the uh, air transport uh, become uh, it becomes vital to to the growth of business and industry in the in a community by providing air access to uh, for companies that must meet the demands of supply competition and expanding areas communities without airports or sufficient air service have limitations placed on their capacity for economic growth the uh, air transport industry has the substantial economic impact both through its own activities and as an enabler of other industries its contribution includes direct indirect induced and catalytic impacts which are related, related to the total revenues of the air transport industry the first one what we have is direct impacts these cover employment and activity within the air transport industry including airline and airport operations aircraft maintenance air traffic control and regulations and activities directly serving air passengers such as check in baggage handling check in baggage handling on site retail and catering facilities not all the services necessarily take place at an airport with some taking place at a uh, head office direct impacts also include the activities of the aerospace manufacturers selling aircraft and components to airlines and related businesses of the 5 million direct jobs generated by the air transport industry worldwide 4.3 million people are employed by the airlines and airports globally contributing around uh, 330 billion us dollars of gross domestic pro, uh, mm, gross domestic product to the global economy indirect impacts Uh, these include uh, employment and activities of suppliers to the uh, air transport industry for example jobs uh, linked to aviation fuel su- uh, suppliers construction companies that build additional facilities the manufacture of uh, goods sold in airport retail outlets and a wide variety of activities in the business services sector like call centers it accountancy etc 5.8 million indirect jobs are uh, supported through purchases of goods and services by companies in the air transport industry examples include jobs in the energy sector uh, generated through the purchase of aviation of the aircraft fuel or the aviation fuel or jet fuel employment uh, in the it sector 
providing uh, computer systems for the air transport industry or the workers required to manufacture retail goods the contribution of these indirect jobs to global gdp is around 375 us billion sorry it's 375 billion us dollars then you uh, then we study about induced impacts okay these includes uh, spending by those directly or indirectly employed in the air transport industry okay that supports jobs industries such as retail outlets companies producing consumer goods and a range of service industries example banks restaurants etc 2.7 million induced jobs are supported through employees in the air transport industry whether it's direct or indirect using their income to purchase goods and services of their own consumption this includes jobs in retail and a range of service industries the induced contribution to global gdp is around 175 billion us dollars okay this is a rough estimation and of the year uh, 2004 okay so then you have catalytic impacts or either in other words i can call it as faster impacts now the air transport industry's uh, most important economic contribution is through its impact on the performance of other industries and as a facilitator of their growth it affects the performance of the world economy improving uh, the efficiency of other industries across the whole spectrum of economic activity referred to as catalytic benefits okay uh, around 15.5 million jobs are res- are the result of catalytic impact okay according to uh, to 2004 estimation uh, of the catalytic contribution to the global uh, gdp is around uh, 2135 billion us dollars mm then we study about the social benefits of a transportation wo as we know uh, a transport uh, plays a vital role okay in the rapid uh, delivery of medical supplies and organs for transplantation worldwide okay the best example for this is uh uh like supplying covid vaccines okay like from india to different countries okay it's uh right you all know uh, like what's going on so um let me start with the social benefits of a transportation okay so um, as uh, the impact of the a transport industry is not just a result of the economic activity it generates or facilitates a transport also contributes to people's quality or quality of life in a number of other ways that are uh, not captured in uh, standard economic in- indicators for example by contributing to sub- uh, sus- sustainable development or supporting remote co- communities and widening consumer choice okay so with this uh, we have like uh, five uh, different uh, points okay what you have to touch in order to understand the social impact of uh, how or in other words like i can say like how does a transportation impact in social okay we have seen the economic impacts now we are going to see the social impacts to understand social impacts you need to know what are the benefits okay so we have five points 
so we have to cover all those so let's start so first point talks about a transport contributes to sustainable development how is the question so let's uh, let me explain this okay a transport makes a major contribution to sustainable development by supporting and promoting international tourism are you clear with this point yes tourism helps reduce poverty by generating economic growth providing it also provides employment uh, opportunities okay it increases tax collection and by fostering the development and conservation of uh, protected areas and the environment meaning like it also fosters the development okay and the conservation of uh, protected areas and the environment okay so in effect uh, protecting the environment attracts tourism and the development of the tourism industry we all know that uh, aviation is a part of travel and tourism sector okay like aviation comes under travel and tourism sector right so uh uh like it uh, really uh it uh, affects if uh the uh if we don't protect the environment okay which uh, which attracts tourism okay and the development of the tourism industry which in turn makes it possible to the uh, to fi- uh, finance the protection okay of uh, nature and cultural heritage thereby increasing the benefits of uh, protected areas to the country uh, moreover uh, the promotion of nature based tourism is an effective lob- lobbying tool that favors nature conservation over non uh, sustainable agriculture activities it can also increase the sense of ownership and responsibility for natural resources among local communities can you see a box like uh, on front of your screen which under that box like you have written about like sustainable development in india i want you guys to read that uh, paragraph okay like if you haven't gone through that i want you guys to read that so it talks about like a transport uh, can make a significant contribution to sustainable development in india okay the country is the home of nearly uh, some like 9% to 9.5 9.5% of the total protected area worldwide okay giving india's a valuable com- uh, comparative advantage in attracting international visitors the uh, expansion of nature based tourism or i can call it as eco tourism okay could become a significant uh, source of revenue employment uh, while helping to ensure the conservation of protected areas then um, we have another point that is air transport provides access to remote areas how so um, a transport okay provides access to remote areas where other transport modes are limited thus opening them up to the contact with other communities and providing a means for the delivery of essential uh, supplies many uh, essential services such as hospitals education post etc okay would not be available for people in such locations without the presence of air services meaning like air services uh is really important in the remote areas as well right next we have air transport delivers human humanitarian aid how air services plays an essential role in humanitarian as assistance to countries facing natural disasters famine and war through cargo deliveries refugee transfers uh, or the evacuation of people trapped by the natural disasters they are particularly important in situations where access where access is a problem 
नेचुरल डिजास्टर्स ऑफन मीन दैट होल कम्युनिटीज आर कट ऑफ ह्यूमन ह्यूमैनिटेरियन असिस्टेंस इन सच सर्कमस्टांसिस कैन ओनली बी डिलीवर्ड रैपिडली टू दोज इन नीड through the use of airports and uh, air services in certain sub- uh, circumstances when uh, when even the airports are damaged air drops are among uh, the first response of uh, aid agencies to stem uh, human human humanitarian crisis okay so air transport also plays a vital role in the rapidly rapid delivery of medical supplies and uh, organs for transplantation worldwide i have said this in the start as well i have repeated this point once again over here as well okay so next comes uh, a transport contributes to consumer welfare how okay travel and tourism provide sub- uh, substantial consumer welfare and social benefits by mainly giving two points to it first is increasing understanding of different cultures and nationalities okay which facilitates a uh, closer international integration okay then we have improving living standards by widening choice cheaper and uh, more frequent access to air travel has increased the range of potential holiday uh, destinations seasonal fruit and vegetables are now available year round at region uh, at reasonable price right the large number of overseas visitors has uh, also helped widen the range of leisure and cultural activities available in many countries especially in india as well right then uh, we have uh, air transport is a uh, fundamental for effective human human humanita- humanitarian aid relief i have already touched this point in uh, like on my third point uh, like this point and that point like almost uh, like it uh, means it almost means the same so um, uh, the next slide what you have is uh, uh, let me uh, now conclude this thing okay um uh so w- w- yeah since the beginning of time uh people have dreamed of flying okay this dream has become a reality for the growing numbers for us um a transport is an innovative and environmentally responsible industry uh, that drives economic and social progress we have seen it it has become one of the greatest contributors to the advancement of modern day society and is the consumer's preferred mode of transportation okay this new atag so what do you mean by atag atag stands for a transport a transport action group okay guys so atag stands for a transport action group okay uh, the atag brochure okay confirms uh, a transports uh, enormous economic and social benefits by providing an update to uh, uh, to reliable f- uh, findings at both worldwide and regional levels this information provided is essential in order for governments and industries to take sound decisions and responsible actions uh, uh, working in close partnership uh, the air transport uh, industry has responded to the growing demand for mobility by investing regularly in number 1 tech new technologies number 2 safety and security improvements number 3 quieter and more fuel efficient aircraft number 4 infrastructure modernization and adaptation and lastly 
business simplification improved services and facilitation for its customers um let me tell you one thing uh, like uh, dr uh, asad quotate okay the president of i q uh, council okay he made a statement uh, telling that uh, in more than 50 years with i q i have witnessed the extra the extraordinary contribution of civil aviation uh, to national regional and global economics when iq was created in 1944 barely 9 million passengers traveled on the world's airlines in 2004 okay there were close to 1.9 billion passengers on scheduled services alone while 37.7 million tons of freight were transported by air this activity was supported by extensive airport and air navigation facilities and a dynamic manufacturing sector for aircraft engines and avionics air transport generates millions of jobs and supports many more millions in associated industries including the world's largest travel and tourism sector so um the air transport industry is okay uh, effort uh, must be matched by government's actions and investment okay so uh, i urge uh, like almost all governments not only me like it's even the icao okay uh, even they tell this that um, Uh, they should further like the government should further liberalize the aviation markets without micro managing the industry nor over taxing it okay uh, provide it should also provides a suitable framework for a mass pr- a transportation system without uh, perpetuating a nationalistic rules not distorting competition through subs- uh, subsidies and lastly uh, it should support infrastructure improvements through new and shorter air routes increased airport uh, capacity with uh, and uh, improved uh, ground access to airports without imposing unreasonable conditions nor re- uh, restricting the industries sustainable growth so at last i would like to tell for the like before i end the uh, chapter of economic and social impact that uh, people want to fly okay let's make it possible for uh, each and every one for us now and in the future next we are going to study about regulatory bodies okay under regulatory bodies the first thing what you are going to study is about uh, moca so what is moca moca stands for ministry of civil aviation okay uh, it's uh, it's located in new delhi okay and it's uh, uh, and it's responsible for formulating the uh, formulation of national policies and programs for the development and regulations of the civil aviation sector in india it is also responsible for the administration of the aircraft act 1934 aircraft rules 1937 and various others legislations pertaining to the aviation sector in india okay the, the like and like there are many uh uh ad uh, like autonomous organizations okay which is attached under this ministry let's look what are those so one is uh, one is directorate general of civil aviation which is called as dgca then you have bureau of civil aviation security or we call it as bcas then you have uh, in in indira gandhi rashtriya udan academy or you can call it as igrua and uh, you have some uh, affiliated public sectors okay which undertake under uh, 
मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ सिविल एविएशन लाइक नेशनल एविएशन कंपनी ऑफ इंडिया लिमिटेड देन यू हैव एयरपोर्ट अथॉरिटीज ऑफ इंडिया एंड देन यू हैव पवन हंस हेलीकॉप्टर्स लिमिटेड then you are going to study about a dgca so you are not going to study much on dgca because in upcoming chapters you are going to have a full uh you are going to study everything about dgca in depth but for now you are going to study just uh, who, like who what does dgca do and what are its functions okay so uh let's quickly look into it so the directorate general of civil civil aviation is the regulatory body okay in the field of civil aviation it primarily uh, deals with the safety issues okay it is also responsible for uh, regulation of air transport services uh well, like which is to or from or within india and for the enforcement of civil aviation regulations okay air safety and air weather standards okay it really uh, looks uh, a lot into all these stuff the dgc also coordinates all regulatory functions and uh, functions with the international civil aviation organization or it is icao i call it as iqo you can just uh, spend like few minutes reading this uh, like by pausing this video and then uh, let's get into the functions of dgc yeah, we are not going to talk uh, a lot much about uh, dgc okay like i'm not going to talk uh, i'm not going to explain every d uh, like everything uh, uh, about the function of dgc because you're going to study this in upcoming chapters so uh, like we just quickly read this what's there in front of the screen so first uh, function of dgca is the registration of civil aircraft second is certification of airports third is licensing of pilots aircraft maintenance aircraft maintenance engineers aircraft air traffic controllers and flight engineers and conducting examinations and checks for the purpose carrying out amendments to the aircraft act the aircraft rules and the civil aviation requirements for complying with the amendments to iqo annexes and initiating proposals for amendments to any other act for or for passing the new act in order to give effect to an international convention or amendment to an existing convention formulating formulation of standards of airworthiness of civil aircraft registered in india and grant of certificates of airworthiness to such aircraft six point comes uh conducting investigation into incidents and serious uh, incidents involving aircraft up to 2250 kg aug auw which means all up weight that is aircraft's gross weight okay and uh, taking uh, accident prevention measures then comes a seventh point is uh, implementation of safety aviation management programs then you have checks on the proficiency of flight crew and other operation personnel such as flight dispatchers and cabin crew then you have uh, coordination of ik ik matters with all agencies sending replies to state letters and taking all necessary actions arising out of the universal safety oversight audit program of iqo number 10 is granting air operators certificates to indian carriers and regulation of air transport services uh, operating to or from or within or over india by indian or foreign operators including clearance of scheduled and non scheduled flights of such operators then comes approval of institutions engaged in flying training including simulator training ame that is aircraft maintenance engineer training aircraft uh, air traffic and air traffic services training or any other training related with aviation with a wide with a view to ensuring a high quality of training 
then comes approval to maintenance repair design and manufacturing organizations and their continued oversight a nodal agency for implementing annex 9 provisions in india and for coordinating matters relating to facilitation at indian airports including holding meetings of the national facilitation committee dgca that is the directorate general of civil aviation okay i am going to stress all these uh, terms again and again i want you guys to keep all these terms in your brain okay these are the short uh, terms what you guys need to know then comes rendering advice to the uh, government on matters relating to air transport including bilateral eight services agreements on uh, international civil aviation organization matters and generally all on all technical matters relating to civil aviation and to act as an overall regulatory and development body for civil aviation in the country number 15 comes a regulation and oversight of matters related to air navigation services coordination at national level for flexi use of air space by civil and military air traffic agencies and interaction with icao for provisions of more uh, air routes for use for civil use through indian air space then point number 16 comes promoting indigen genius design and manufacture of aircraft and aircraft components by acting as a catalytic agents number 17 approving training programs of uh, operators for carriage of dangerous goods issuing authorizations of for carriage and uh, of dangerous goods etc number 18 which is the final point safety oversights of all entitled approved or certified or certified or licensed under the e cloud rules of 1937 with this we have finished with the functions of dgca next what we are going to study is about then uh, yeah like we are going to study about ministry of defense i will be reading this once again what's on the screen okay because many of you know how our ministry of defense works okay if not you can always take help of google okay but for now the like i just want to tell you that the ministry of defense okay is charged with uh, coordinating and supervising all agencies and functions of the government relating directly to the national security and the indian armed forces the ministry has the largest budget among the federal departments of india like uh, let me tell you some of them okay like you have indian revenue services department of disinvestment department of economic affairs department of revenue central board of excise and customs okay and currently maintains fourth in military exp- expenditure among uh, countries of the world the president of india is the ceremonial commander in chief of the armed forces of the country the Def- the ministry of defense provides policy framework and uh, resources to the armed forces to discharge their responsibility in the context of the defense of the country and then we have uh, key performance indicators key performance indicators are a set of quality quantifiable measures okay uh, uh, measures uses which uses to uh, gauge the performance over time these metrics are used to determine a company's progress in achieving its uh, strategic and operational goals okay and also uh, to compare a company's finances and performance against other businesses in within its industry let me tell you this with a simple sentence okay so key performance indicators or kpis are the most important business metrics for a particular industry when understanding markets uh, expectations for airlines whether at a company or industry level 
let me tell some of the airline kpis which is to be considered first is uh, available seat miles or you can call it as asm then you have revenue passenger miles rpm then you have load factor then you have total revenue per available seat miles then you have passenger revenue per available seat miles then you have total cost and expenses as per uh, available seat miles then you have total cost and expenses per available seat miles x fuel then you have ebit dar so let's uh, let me continue this with uh, the definition okay what you should know you just you don't need to know much on it let me just know what is what bus so available seat miles is nothing but is a measure of airline capacity okay available seat miles is calculated by taking the number of seats available and multiplying by, by the distance flown simple okay then uh, uh you have cost per available seat mile right so uh, it is a measure of efficiency uh cost per uh, available seat mile okay it's calculated by taking operating expenses and dividing by available seat miles revenue per available seat mile okay it is calculated by dividing the airline's total revenue by its total available seat miles next comes load factor okay it's a measure of utilization passenger load factor is the number of revenue passenger miles expressed as the percentage of available seat miles okay or you can i can uh, tell it as uh revenue passenger miles divided by uh available seat miles okay then uh, you have something called as airport charges okay so expenses uh, like these are the expenses paid by the airlines for the use of airport facilities including aircraft landing freight and other charges related to the use of airport infrastructure such as runways and terminals then you have uh, something called as passenger yield okay so it is a measure of average fare paid per mile per passenger Calcul it is calculated by dividing passenger revenue by revenue passenger miles so next comes total revenue per available seat miles okay so uh, it is calculated by dividing total revenue by available seat miles then comes a uh, passenger revenue per available seat miles okay it is calculated by dividing passenger revenue available seat passenger revenue by available uh, seat miles okay uh passenger revenue per available seat miles uh, is also equivalent to the product of load factor and passenger yield you have to keep this in your brain okay then comes revenue passenger miles so what it is it's a measure of volume okay and uh, this revenue passenger miles is calculated by taking the number of passengers and multiplying by miles of flight okay then comes uh, then comes cost per available seat miles okay x fuel okay it is calculated by taking operating expenses and it is divided by uh, like you need to divide it by uh, the available seat miles and then you have to subtract with the total cost of fuel then comes uh, abit dar meaning earnings before interest taxes depreciation amortization and restructuring or 
रेंटिंग कॉस्ट लेट मी टेल यू गाइज यू डोंट नीड टू नो मच ऑफ दिस ओके मच ऑन दिस कॉस्ट दिस इज रियली अ वर्स्ट टॉपिक एंड यू आर न्यू टू दिस कोर्स सो यू जस्ट नीड टू हैव अ लिमिटेड इंफॉर्मेशन जस्ट नीड टू नो ओनली दिस इंफॉर्मेशन एंड नथिंग एल्स ओके सो यू हैव लॉट मेनी थिंग्स टू लर्न अंडर फिनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट ओके लाइक दिस इज अ पार्ट ऑफ फिनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट ओके लाइक यू विल बी स्टार्टिंग आई गेस लाइक योर कॉलेज और लाइक द कॉलेज वे यू आर स्टार्टिंग ओके दे विल बी टीचिंग यू ऑल दी स्टफ ओके If you are pursuing your MBA or BBA, obviously you will be studying all these subjects. But for now, this information is enough. Okay. So next, uh, what we are going to study is about to carefully uh select the key performance indicators. Okay. or we can i can i can either say it as like to carefully identify um to carefully uh, precisely identify uh to, like how you can select key performance indicators there are some uh, actions to be taken okay to improve its uh, overall performance so what are those let's uh, check that okay so performance measurement is a fundamental principle of management okay you have to understand this the measurement of performance is important because it identifies current performance gaps between current and desired performance and provides indication of progress towards closing the gaps i am provide okay. indication of progress um uh, then what's closing the gaps you have something called as what makes a uh, key performance indicator effective right so um first one comes like you need to have a powerful form of communication okay then you uh, like it uh, like this demonstrates demonstrates a uh, business data in easy to understand and clear way it also helps uh, make bet, uh, make better decisions more clear and and it uh, based on the data given or like based on the data what we have collected okay then it helps you to evaluate the success okay it also gives you a broad understanding of your business's current position okay and uh, it also shows your progress towards your key goals so guys with this we, are, we have uh, come to an end of this first unit i know this was really long chapter and i have already crossed more than 1 hour of this session okay so yep um uh so guys like yeah, uh, like if you like this video make sure you like this video and if you find this video informative uh do share it with your uh, other aspirants okay subscribe to this channel and if you have any doubts you can uh, feel free put them in the comments below and i will uh try answering those asap and yes uh, always remember good uh, always remember guys a good aviation aspirant is always learning exploring see you on the next unit all the best your aviation guruji